So, a question, question, I don't see asked much, um, is why we don't know our purpose, why we don't have a sense of our calling. It's a very interesting question, actually. Um, I mean, hopefully by now, if you've seen some of the other videos, or it maybe just makes sense to you that having a sense of purpose is really positive, right? Like we're doing better work, we're getting paid more, our relationships are better, we feel better, we're not so drained at the end of the day, all these kind of cool stuff, right? So why is that not the norm? Why is that not the norm? Interesting, hey? I mean, we could look at it um, historically, like in another video I mentioned, like, you know, my family were Irish fishermen and uh, farmers and things like that just three generations ago. They hardly had any choices, right? Maybe they felt really on purpose, uh, you know, doing their thing. Maybe it was just like, you know, this is what we do. This is what we were raised for. This is our value. So they were totally aligned. Their experience, they had done it since they were kids, right? So of course they could do it, no big deal. Um, so maybe they were totally on purpose or maybe they just didn't really have a choice. In those days, it was a lot harder for most of the world's population. It still is in many countries, still, much, still pretty hard, you know. I'm, I'm speaking to a pretty privileged kind of Western audience in this. Um, you know, even if you live somewhere that, say, I don't know, Ukraine or Russia that has economic difficulties, you're still way better off than people in um, rural China or somewhere in Uganda, for example. Um, you know, so it's really only in the modern world we've um, been able to make more choices, I think. It was much harder in the past, just practically. Um, that sort of position of responsibility actually has a lot more power now. We've always been able to take it, but now it's a lot more, you're able to do more with it, I would say, just practically. Um, but that's also part of the problem, right? Like, if, you know, someone said to my great-grandfather, okay, son, you're a fisherman, we're gonna teach you how to teach, uh, catch fish off the south coast of Ireland, and be like, right, let's get on with it, this is what we do, you know, a fisher family. Uh, grow some potatoes, maybe, you know, that's the only you know, two alternatives, do you wanna grow potatoes or catch fish, you yeah. um, know? Now, now, it's, it's, there's so many choices, right? And it's kind of bewildering. There's lots of studies, actually, which show that choice makes you unhappy, too much choice, you know? It's contradictory, you think this sort of whole, uh, kind of modern world, you know, capitalism set up on, you can have all these flavors of things, you know? Um, actually, no, actually choice can be very difficult and paralyzing and make us feel like we've made the wrong choices, you know? Um, can be, I remember coming back from living in Africa, in, in East Africa, and being in a supermarket and just being like, oh my God, this is taking so much mental energy to shop, whereas in the place I was in Ethiopia, I just went, oh, I had some bread, some cheese, some, I didn't have cheese actually, some bread, some, you know, it wasn't much to get, I just got dinner, it was easy. Took five minutes, no mental energy, no stress. Yeah. Um, so like the choices can be paralyzing. Um, like when we can do anything, we're like, what the fuck do I do? And there can be this sense of like the better parties happening elsewhere, right? Like that's part of the modern predicament. Um, so that's the kind of like, we might just say that's the circumstance, but, but I'm a little more paranoid than that. I think there's something else going on. Um, I think the, uh, the setup, the powers that be, um, do not want us really to be on purpose, right? Like actually a workforce which is slightly not on purpose, they might be slightly less productive than ones who are, um, but they're, they're, they can be told what to do. They can be made to work in a, in, in a uh, weapons uh, arms manufacturer. They can be made to work in a tobacco company, you know? And I, I spoke to a girl that worked in a tobacco company actually, and I said, um, I said just not long ago actually, from Kazakhstan I think, I said, why do you do that? Why do you do that? And she said, well, you know, it's a job, got to have a job, haven't really thought about it, you know. And she's a lovely person, so not, not a bad human being, ethical, kind, generous person, and devoting her life to an addictive substance which kills people, right? Like, it's a fairly clear-cut example now. Perhaps there's some purpose you could find in a tobacco company. Not, you know, again, I'm not saying people that work tobacco companies are bad people. I'm saying for me, and even, and her, more importantly, her values, it didn't really match but she never really thought about it. She never been really encouraged to think about it. At school, there's a little bit of kind of careers guidance, but it's all about being realistic. It's not, nobody ever said to me, you know what you can do, Mark? You can create a job working with embodiment, uh, helping people find their passion, and you can do it around the world in your own crazy, creative way, and you can swear and make jokes and talk about sex with dolphins. Nobody fucking said that to me at school, right? Yet here I am, and if I went to a school reunion, I'd be considered one of the more successful people in my, in my, in my school, for sure, for sure. Um, so I wasn't told to do that. Um, you know, it can just be about having role models. Like I have some really good role models. I, for Aikido, happened to meet some people who'd been more entrepreneurial. They'd started big projects. They'd done cool stuff. And that inspired me. Yeah. Um, but I would say, that, you know, the most of the world's population is being deliberately uninspired. Uh, is being deliberately distracted. And a group of, you know, if the world was really in touch with their values, they wouldn't be buying uh, shit they don't need. 
Yeah? Uh, so I think a whole economic system is built on people not knowing their values so they can be uh, fed shit and forced to buy shit and elect shit. Yeah? The one that's really in charge of the world is about manufacturing fake needs, uh, manufacturing fear, manufacturing craving, um, and leading people away from their heart, from their calling. So um, for me, what we're doing here, um, yes, it's personally very useful for all the reasons we've looked at, you know, health, happiness, relationships, money, blah, blah, blah. But it's more than that. There's a, 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 I hope it's not too pretentious to say, there's a revolutionary quality um, to really getting in touch with what you care about and what you want to do. Because in our work, right, we're not just getting a paycheck, like that's very limited. We're, we're what's the world we're building, yeah? Like what's the world we want to build? And what's the world we build? Not as a hobby, not as something we do on Facebook for 20 minutes a day, what it, what, not something we do at the weekend. What's the world we want to build with like most of our waking life, right? So yeah, of course people don't want, you know, the powers that be don't want people in touch with that. Like, of course. So, um, yeah, I think this is, I've never heard this said before, like, why are we not in touch with purpose? I mean, there's more pieces to this. The disembodiment piece is a big one. That's part of the how of this political piece, by taking people out of their bodies. Uh, you lose sense of your heart, your values, your relationships, what you care about. So there's a how piece there, brainwashing type stuff as well. But, um, yeah, so I think it's important to remember what we're doing is weird and countercultural and a little bit dangerous and subversive. Um, that's kind of sexy, but it's also, it's also true. It's also true. Um, I see more people doing this increasingly. I see certainly in younger generations, it's more of a, people don't just want a job that's meaningless. So I, I think humanity is kind of growing in this sense. Um, so it's cool to be part of that. It's cool to be part of that. So that's maybe the bigger context of, um, you know, if you're beating yourself up, like, why have I not found my purpose? And, you know, you know like, well, there's a reason for it, you know? There's, there was, you're in a particular set of conditions. Um, but back to self-responsibility, that's not an excuse now. It's not an excuse. There's more than enough resources on this course, let alone in all the other books and things we could recommend. Um, you know, there's plenty of good work out there around this. But just on this course, there's enough for that no longer to be an excuse. Um, so it's, you know, understand that you are out of contact with this deliberately and made that way for a reason, yes, and now it's your responsibility.